Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're learning Maseches Kiddushin Daf Lamed Zayin, and we're starting at a fresh Mishnah at the bottom of Daf Lamed Vav Amid Beis. Seemingly out of left field, the Gemara begins with an unrelated sugya, nothing to do with Kiddushin uh, at all. It says the Mishnah on the bottom of Lamed Vav Amid Beis, Kol Mitzvah Shehi Tluya Baaretz, any commandment which is Tluya, dependent on, or can only take place within Eretz Yisrael, Eina Noheges El Baaretz. That din only applies within the borders of Eretz Yisrael. Conversely, v'she'ena taluy baaretz. If you have a commandment that isn't taluy baaretz, meaning it's not dependent on the land of Israel, then no heges bein baaretz bein b'chutz laaretz. That then is a commandment that applies anywhere in Eretz Yisrael and in Chicago and in Babel and in b'chol tuzos aaretz. No matter where you are, the halachic obligation would be everywhere. Chutz min ha'orla. Except, as we turn to the top of Lamed Zayin and Aleph, except for these two areas of halacha that break a rule from the previous set of rules. Now, we don't know what the chutz goes on. Is it breaking the first rule and saying that there's a minig of Eretz Yisrael that applies in chutz arts, Or is there is it breaking the rule of she'enet tuleh and breaking the rule saying that something that's enet tuleh baaretz is only chayv in Eretz Yisrael? So to that, Rashi gives us an answer. And this is going to be a longer discussion today in the Gemara about the intent of the Tanakama, and we will soon see the Bal Plugta of Rebbe Lazar. But Rashi says, what is meant by the Mishnah when it says, Chutz min ha'orla, umin ha'kilayim? Rashi says, She'afal pi she'tluyos pa'aretz, that even though really these mitzvos, the mitzvah of Orla and the Isser of Kilayim, even though, I should say, the Isser of Orla and the Isser of Kilayim, even though these two things really are mitzvah satsuyos pa'aretz, Rashi explains, that they apply even outside of Eretz Yisrael. So this really goes in the category of the first part of the Mishnah, which is that it's a mitzvah tzuli ba'aretz. And even though in general, mitzvah tzuli ba'aretz are only noheges ba'aretz, these two cross boundaries and the world of Orla and the world of Kilaim apply even outside of Eretz Yisrael. Rebbe Lazar Omer, Av ha'chadash. Even the Isser of Chadash would apply uh, that uh, it would still apply in Chutz Laaretz as well. This machlokes is a little enigmatic, and we're going to learn about this a little bit later. Asks the Gemara, my tluya, umay, tluya. How do we define that which is dependent on Eretz Yisrael versus that which is not dependent? Ilema tluya ba If we're talking about any, any pasuk, any isr or any mitzvah that has a pasuk in it that has the language of bo. And here Rashi gives us a couple of examples. Rashi Dibur Hamaskal, third line, Tluya Dhsibabia, Shetila Hakasu Babiasaretz, where that mitzvah or isr is dependent on entering into Eretz Yisrael. And Rashi says, Kigon ki savo and ki yacha, back in the Gemara. If you're defining a mitzvah tluya baaretz, if it has the word bia and and mitzvahs that are not talui don't have the language of bia. So that can't be the line in the sand between a mitzvah tuli of aretz and a mitzvah shein tuli of aretz. Why not? Because four lines down, the Gemara says, excuse me, that's one of the Arba Parshio Sotilma there we see that the mitzvah of tefillin seems to have the word bia. Yet we know that everyone is obligated to wear tefillin even in chutzar. It's not a din of bnei eretz yisrael. So the Gemara says, "V'noagin bein baaretz bein b'chutzar." It's a person's obligated. Obviously, we all put on tefillin this morning. We're all obligated to keep uh, the mitzvah of tefillin in chutzar. So therefore, says the Gemara, if you're going to define talui and eno talui, tuliya and eno tuliya. A mitzvah tuliya has the word a language of bow. That can't be because tefillin breaks that rule. So the Gemara makes a chakira, which we're then going to have to figure out where it comes from. Says the Gemara, Amar of Yehuda Hachikamar. This is really pshat in what we're talking about. Kol mitzvah shehi chovas haguf. When we're talking about a mitzvah that has to do with your physical body, such as tefillin, lulav and esro, anything that has to do with your physical body. So says the Gemara. Then no heges bein ba'aretz bein b'chutzlaretz. Whether or not it has the language of bo or bia in the psukim, like like by tefillin, it doesn't matter because it's a chovas haguf. The boundary of Eretz Yisrael has no bearing, and the mitzvah of, in this case, tefillin applies across the world. B'chol ha'olam kulo, nothing to talk about. However, 
Chovas Karka, says the Gemara. And this is the other side of the Chakira. When we're talking about Karka, and then we have something with the language of Bia, we have the language of Hayoki Biacha, like by Bikurim. So then in those cases, says the Gemara, then Einan Oheges Elabaharetz. And that's the Gemara's Chakira. So there is a combination of sorts. If it's a mitzvah shetzli ba'aretz with the language of Bia, and it's Chovas Karka and not Chovas Aguf, then it's only Baharetz. If it's a mitzvah that seemingly has the word bia in it as well. But it's a chovah saguf, then we do not limit that mitzvah to the world of Eretz Yisrael. It applies across the boards. It applies everywhere. That's the chakira that the Mishnah made. And now the Gemara wants to know about eight lines down, minohani mili. How do we know this to be true? Eight lines down in Lamed Zayin and And to this, the Gemara says as follows, the Tanu Rabbanon. We have a lengthy uh, drasha here, a number of different parts of a pasuk. The pasuk is, So let's uh, parse out this pasuk from Dvar Mjud Beis. That's uh, in regards to all the drashos of the halachos. We're not going to drill in as to what that means for us right now. We'll get to the part that's relevant to us in a moment. This means the halachic aspects of money. Asher Tishmarun, Zu Mishnah. La Asos, Zu Maisa. There's learning that you have to do and there's Maisim that you have to do. Here's our language. Then the Pasuk says, Ba'aretz. And now we're interested in learning how we can learn from this Pasuk that there's a distinction between Chovas Aguf and Chovas Karka. So it says the Gemara Ba'aretz, Yachol kol mitzvos kulan lo yihu no hagin ala Ba'aretz a crazy havamin of a Gemara, that perhaps we should assume, and there's a Ramban that speaks about this idea, perhaps we should assume that uh, all of the mitzvos, all of them, only apply in Eretz Yisrael. Talmud Lomar, that that's not true. The Pasuk, when it says, it doesn't mean that it, it does sound like that, but it doesn't mean that it's Baretz. How do we offset that Habamina? The Gemara says, because Talmud Lomar, we have another part of the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Kol hayamim asher atem chayim alho adama. And Adama is not a reference only to Eretz Yisrael. There's a ground everywhere. We're standing, sitting on ground right now. So therefore, the Gemara says, we know that the word Ba'arez does not limit us to the world of Eretz Yisrael, but rather it applies across the boards. He called Hayamim, if in fact, the Gemara says, if in fact the Pasuk says called Hayamim, and therefore mitzvah supply even outside of Eretz Yisrael, then Yachol Yehu Noagin, Bein Ba'aretz, Bein B'chutz La'aretz, then what about the halachos that apply specifically to the land of Eretz Yisrael? Says the Gemara, Tamal Nomar Ba'aretz. So we have uh, a larger phrase of Kol Hayamim Asher Atem Chaim Al HaAdam, a very broad phrase, seemingly implying all of it, uh, the land in the world. And then we have a more narrow scope of Ba'aretz, which seems to be Ba'aretz Yisrael. So how do we figure out these two um, opposites? One seemingly, Kol HaAdam, is talking about the whole world, and one is only talking about Ha'aretz, talking about Eretz Yisrael. So to this, the Gemara says, Tam, uh, uh, Echad, once the Torah was riba, was broad in regards to speaking about all of the Adama of the world, and then umiyet, and then it limited it to aretz, that is when we learned the following. That's when we can then understand the next pasuk. And what do we learn from this pasuk that we have to destroy Avodah Zarah? That just like Avodah Kochavim is an act, Rahman al Islam that a person would do with their body. And it would apply in Eretz Yisrael and outside of Eretz Yisrael. With all of the, the, the coalescing of all of the Psukim here, we therefore can see that when we're talking about a Chovas Haguf, such as doing Avodah Zarah, where that applies throughout all boundaries, we therefore see that all mitzvot apply over all boundaries, not just in Eretz Yisrael. But when there is something that isn't Chovas, the Gemara doesn't articulate this piece, but it's true that when we have something that isn't Chovas Haguf, but rather is Chovas Akarka, then we have this idea of mitzvot Tzuluya Baretz and the Gemara's Chakira. The difference between Chovas Saguf, where something applies even outside of Eretz Yisrael, and Chovas Akarka, where something applies uh, only in Eretz Yisrael, let me just make sure I said that right. Chovas Saguf applies all over the world, and Chovas Akarka only applies in Eretz Yisrael. The distinction is considered valid. The Gemara says that the two dots, a little bit, uh, almost halfway down. We had said in our Mishnah, Chutz min ha'orla v'kilayim. Now, again, uh, Rashi kind of gave us a sneak peek, but the Gemara actually has a difficult time understanding our Mishnah on its face. Why? The Gemara poses a question. 
Rabbi Eliezer, when he adds in his shita of av hachadash, is he lekula palik or lechumra palik? Is he trying to be more lenient or is he trying to be more strict? Let's see if we can figure it out. Do we say lechumra palik that really Rabbi Eliezer is being more strict? Uh, Tanakama is saying that kilayim and orla are different. They apply even outside of Eretz Yisrael because the hilchas sagemirila that uh, there's a halacha l'moshmi Sinai that extends the iser of Orla and Kilaim even outside of Eretz Yisrael. And afal gav the ikla memar chovas karkahu. And even though really it is a chovas akarka, not a chovas aguv, it's only about the land. Even so, aval chadash ba'aretz, even though it's true that that that, uh, that chadash is about the land, chadash is ba'aretz in the Eretz Yisrael lo. And why would it be that the Tanakama would include Orla and Kilaim? in that it applies outside of Chutz Laaretz, and exclude Chadash, the Isra of Chadash, eating bread, uh, eating uh, flour before the Korban HaOmer is brought on the second day of uh, Pesach. My time, because the Pasuk over there says Moshav, Le'achar Yerusha V'yeshiva Mashma. Moshav means a, it's a, a place of settlement, and we assume it's Achar Yerusha V'yeshiva after we've inherited the land of Eretz Yisrael and settled it. Uh, and ve'aser Rebbe Lazar lemeimar l'chumra. He comes to be strict to say no. Av chadash noig bein ba'aretz bein b'chutz laaretz. That perhaps Rabbi Eliezer is being machmir, not on it, what it seems to be, which is uh, or lavekilayim, which is what the Tanakama was talking about. But Rebbe Lazar, according to this first half of the question, uh, that maybe Rabbi Eliezer is being machmir, that perhaps what Rabbi Eliezer is saying is that whereas the Tanakama says or and kilayim apply even outside of the boundaries of Eretz Yisrael, however chadash applies. Um, only in Eretz Yisrael comes along Rabbi Eliezer to be the machmir to say even Chadash is going to be Asr outside of Eretz Yisrael. My time, huh? why would Rabbi Eliezer be machmir? Because Moshe doesn't imply Eretz Yisrael. Unlike the Tanakhama, who learned that the word Moshe was teaching us Yerusha via Shiva, that it's once Eretz Yisrael is inherited by us and once it becomes a part of our land that we actually own it, we're in charge of it. And he says, no, Rabbi Eliezer argues and says, that's not what Moshav means. Moshav only means land in general. So that's one half of the argument that perhaps Rabbi Eliezer was coming along to be machmir on the shita of, uh, of Chadosh to say that Chadosh applies only in, uh, that Chadosh applies uh, only in Eretz Yisrael. That's what the Tanakam held. Rabbi Eliezer would say Chadosh applies even in Chutzlaretz. O Dilma, or perhaps two thirds of the way down on Lamed Zayin and Aleph, perhaps we can say Lakula Palik, that really, really Rabbi Eliezer was being a Mekil and not a Machmir. How would we then be able to learn our Mishnah accordingly? When the Tanakama was of the opinion of Chutz Mina Orlo Vehakilayim, Tehilchas Gemirila, the Kol Shekain Chadash, perhaps the Tanakama was of the opinion that not only are Orla and Kilayim, like Rashi says, that even though they're Tluyos Ba'aretz, but they're Noagin even in Eretz Yisrael, and all the more so Chadash is also like that. Uh, kol makom, uh, why is this? Because the Moshav implies kol makom she'atem yoshvim mashma, because they hold the opposite of what we had said before. Perhaps they hold that Moshav doesn't mean Eretz Yisrael. Moshav means everywhere. And therefore, Orla, Kilaim, and Chadash, according to the Tanakama, apply broadly even into Chutz Laaretz. And also, Rav Lazar, the Meimar, Chadash, Eno, and Noheg, Ela Ba'aretz. He's being a Mekel. He's limiting the Isser of Chadash to say that it only applies in Eretz Yisrael. Why? Because when the word Moshev is used, it's coming to teach us only after Eretz Yisrael is ours, after we've had it as a Yerusha and after we've settled it. And therefore, Chadash is dependent on that. And without Eretz Yisrael having a Yerusha Yeshiva, when it's not fully ours, the Yisra of Chadash does not apply outside of Eretz Yisrael. And there, therefore, we are, he is being Mekel. If that's true, the Gemara asks, so my af, or 12 lines from the bottom, remember that Rabbi Eliezer at the top line of this page, which is the end of our Mishnah, says Rabbi Eliezer Omer, af ha-chadash, even chadash. Why would he say even? It's the opposite. It shouldn't be even chadash because he's arguing against the Tanakama. The Tanakama says that chadash applies in Chutz Laaretz too. And he says, af ha-chadash. Af what? What do you mean even? This doesn't apply. It's the opposite. It doesn't apply in Chutz Laaretz. Says the Gemara, akam He's only talking about af as it relates to the beginning of our Mishnah, where we, when we say that it only applies in Eretz Yisrael, it's like the first line of our Mishnah. Now look back at our Mishnah on the bottom of Lamed Vavim Abayz, and it'll flow perfectly. Kol mitzvah shitulia ba'aretz, ena no haf af ha'chadash. 
Rabbi Eliezer is extending on that first line of the Mishnah. So that is the end of our question. We've articulated both sides. Is Rabbi Eliezer saying that we're machmir on Chadash, that whereas the Tanakhama holds that Chadash applies only in Eretz Yisrael, Rabbi Eliezer holds it applies even outside of Eretz Yisrael? Or no, do we say like approach number two, that the Tanakhama was of the opinion that Chadash applies all over the world? And really, the, the Rabbi Eliezer is coming to limit and saying, no, it only applies in limited form in Eretz Yisrael. So the Gemara says, Tashma, let's try and come up with an answer. Eight, nine, ten lines from the bottom of line, Lamed Zayin Amid Aleph. Tashma, Amar Abayi, Man Tana de Poligale de Rabbi Eliezer, who is the author, who is basically the Tanakam of our Mishnah, who is the one who argues, argues with Rabbi Eliezer, says the Gemara, Rabbi Yishmali, who uh, says the following, Bryce de Tanya, that in this b'risa, we see that the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer, who we are now presenting as our Tanakama, was of the opinion that that Chadash would only apply if it was after Eretz Yisrael, which means that if he's our Tanakama and he holds that Moshev is only Eretz Yisrael, so then he's being Mekil, which means that Rabbi Eliezer, who's arguing with him, is being machmir to say that Chadash applies everywhere, not only in Eretz Yisrael. Now, within that b'risa, Amar lo Rabbi Akiva, Hare Shabbos shenem arbo moshavos v'noheges bein ba'aretz bein b'chutz la'aretz. I understand what you're saying, Rabbi Shmuel. You want to say that the word bia, when it comes, shows up in a pasuk, the word moshav, or in this case, the word moshav, when it shows up in a pasuk, it should only be Eretz Yisrael. But we have the Pasuk Lo Subaru Eish Bechol Moshvosechem Beyoma Shabbos. And yet we see, we know that we're not allowed to light a fire anywhere, not in Chicago, not anywhere else, anywhere in the world on Shabbos. It's an Isser Deraisa Chayv Skila Bide Bez and Chayv Misi Bide Shamay Pasha. You're not allowed to do that. So the Gemara is bothered by this presentation because if Rabbi Shmuel is right that the language of Moshvosechem implies only in Eretz Yisrael, which was how we got to rejecting. Uh, one half of our question and siding with the first approach of our Gemara, the Rabbi Eliezer, the Chumra. That's great. But then we have a side issue, which is that Shabbos has the word Moshe Vosechem, yet we see it applies more broadly. How do we get out of this situation? Amar Lehi, Rabbi Shmuel would respond back to Rabbi Akiva, don't worry. Kalvachomer, Shabbos Kalvachomer Asya. There's a Kalvachomer in regards to Shabbos. Ma mitzvos kalos no hagos bein ba'aretz bein b'chutzlaretz. Just like regular mitzvos, uh, picking a uh, lightweight one, shatnas. Right? Shatnas is not descriptive or, you know, something that really, oh, yes, now we see you're an iconic Jew. No, Shabbos, the big stuff is Shabbos. The small stuff is something like Shabbos. I'm not minimizing the Isser, it's still an Isser Daraisa, but it doesn't compare it to Shabbos. So the Gemara says, if we have mitzvos kalos that are noheg bein ba'aretz bein b'chutzlaretz, Shabbos chamira l'kol shikin, all the more so Shabbos. So that's not really a good question. Now, and we said it was Rabbi Shmuel, this approach is beautiful. And we therefore see that because our Tanakama is Rabbi Shmuel, and because Rabbi Shmuel in this Brisa holds that Moshav means Eretz Yisrael, that means that the Tanakama must hold that Chadash is only Usr in Eretz Yisrael. And Rabbi, when Rabbi Eliezer comes along to say, Afa Chadash, he must be broadening what the Tanakama was saying from Chadash only applies in Eretz Yisrael, to say that now it applies everywhere, even in Chutzlar, and therefore Rabbi Eliezer is Machmir, and we've answered our question. The Gemara analyzes, Michvi, Rabbi Shmuel Ahecha Koy. What was that Brisa talking about? We spoke about it in terms of our case. It's really not the context of the Brisa. What was Rabbi Shmuel talking about in regards to that Brisa? He was talking about bringing Nesachin libations when we bring Korbanos. Says the, the Gemara, the Nesachin, Bia Umoshav Ksibahu. There we have double Shonos of Bia and Moshe. So if that's true, that we don't only have Moshe, but we have the language of Bia as well by Nesachin. So if that's true, then maybe you can't bring a Raya from Rabbi Yishmael back to our Mishnah, because our Mishnah only has one Lashon and not two. Says the Gemara, Hachi Kamar, not correct. L'lamin shokom makam shenem ar Bia u Moshe, eno ela la'achar Yerusha v'yeshiva, tibi Rabbi Yishmael. So this, what the pshat over here would be that according to Rabbi Shmuel, when we have a double language of Bia and Moshe, that's when it has to be like Eretz Yisrael. Yahachi says the Gemara, Amar lo Rabbi Shmuel, when Rabbi Akiva, when Rabbi Akiva says back to him, we're on Lamed Zayin, Lamed Beis, and we are four lines down. We're going to be going most of the way toward the bottom of the page. So says the Gemara as follows. Hare Shabbos, Nem, Shenem, Arbo Moshavos. We have the word Moshe by Shabbos. And we had already said, and as a response to Shabbos, Shabbos kalvachomer. But why did you give that response? 
if Rabbi Shmuel was saying that the only time we settle Eretz Yisrael, that things are limited to Eretz Yisrael, is when there's a double language of Bia and Moshev, Shabbos only has Moshev. Why didn't you answer that Shabbos has different language than the other case? Shabbos only has the language of Moshev. That's uh, Lo But the cases we've been dealing with prior, the case of Chadash, has a double language. The case of Nesachim have a double language of Bia and Moshev. That's what we should have answered. So to that, the Gemara says, Nehmai, we should have we should have asked, Nehmai, lay on a bio Moshev Kamina. Shabbos is not com com comparable to Nesachim, Rabbi Akiva. You're wrong. Your question's bad. Says the Gemara, six lines down, Chada ve'od kamar lay. Really, Rabbi Akiva uh, got two answers to his question. Rabbi Akiva was bothered by the language of Moshev Sechem by Shabbos and how it compared to Nesachim. So the Gemara is saying there really are two reasons. Chada de'ana bio Moshev Kamina. Rabbi Shmuel's answer, number one, is that I have a double language by Nesachim, one of Bia, one of Moshe. And the second thing, says the Gemara, is Va'od. The Ka'amris, Hari Shabbos, Shenem, Harbo, Moshevos, Shabbos, Kalvachomri. Not, nothing to worry about. Everything is fine and well. So then the Gemara wants to know, okay, I understand that Rabbi Eliezer is the Chumra. Explain the Machlok as a Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva to me. Says the Gemara, B'may Kemiflage. The Kirbo Nesachim, B'midbar Kemiflage. They're arguing about when people brought a korban in the midbar, whether or not there was a need for libations, whether or not any wine was added to the korbanos. Says the Gemara, Rebbe Shmuel, Sabar, lo kirvu nesachim midbar that uh, no, there was no nesachim, there was no nesachim brought on korbanos in the midbar, Rebbe Akiva, Sabar, kirvu nesachim midbar that in fact there were libations added to the korbanos in the midbar. Omar Abaye, we have a problem. Hai tana debe Rebbe Shmuel, mapik meidach tana debe Rebbe Shmuel. We learned the opinion of Tana Debe Rebbe Shmuel already today. And that's on the bottom of the previous page. And uh, the problem is that the Rebbe Shmuel that we learned about on the bottom of the previous page is Mapik. It departs from another sheet of Tana Debe Rebbe Shmuel. And he was, these two will live in two different camps. And now we need to analyze. Let's see what the problem is. What is the question that Abayi is raising? So the Gemara says, Mapik me'idach Tana Debe Rebbe Shmuel. The Tana Debe Rebbe Shmuel because there are times when it says, for example, without Moshe. And then in some cases, we do have a case, as we had by Nesachim, where the word Moshe was added. So then, and in that case, we said that beyond Moshe, in both case, where both of those languages were there, that that means that that didn't only applies in Eretz Yisrael. So then, af kol la'achar Yerushav Yeshiva, in all cases, that should be true. And that's a stira between the two shitas of Tana Debe Rabbi Shmuel. So the Gemara says, V'idach, how would the first Rabbi Shmuel answer? Mishum da'hava melech hu'bikur m'shnei k'suven ha'bayin k'echad, v'shnei v'chol shnei k'suven ha'bayin k'echad, e'in melamdin, you can't ask from where you're asking from because the second Tana Debe Rabbi Shmuel was talking about Melech. And the Melech, that Pasuk is already limited. It's already used for the sake of Shnei Ksuvan Abayin Kechad. We'll see the details about this in a little bit. Pe'idach, what would the second author of the Tana Debe Rabbi Shmuel say? He says, no, it's not correct. Melech and Bikurim are not Shnei Ksuvan Abayin Kechad. Why not? Sriche, we need both. Just about halfway down on Lamed Zayin Amid Beis. Di'ikas of Rachman Melech Velokas of Bikurim. If uh, the Torah had only written about a Melech and did not write about Bikurim, Havamini Bikurim to Kamishani Lalter, I might have thought by Bikurim that by Bikurim we should bring the gift right away, even though Eretz Yisrael wasn't established yet. Kamash Malan, that that's not the case, that we really need that Pasuk of Bikurim, because otherwise we would have misunderstood. And the Ikasa Bikurim, the Melech, and had the Torah presented only the case of Bikurim without the case of Melech, I also would have made a mistake. Havamina Melech, the Dark Olachavish, the Altar, that a king who has the capacity to conquer, then he should settle Eretz Yisrael right away. Incorrect, that's not true. So therefore, these two psukim were needed, not because of Shnei Ksuv and Abayin Kechad, because they were both needed to offset misunderstandings. So says the Gemara V'idach, what would the, the other Tana say about this? I still could have only had the Pasuk of Melech, I would not need the Pasuk of Bikurim. Why not? I would have argued. I would have argued that when a king conquers, only when he's done does he make it into Eretz Yisrael, and Bikurim all the more so. V'idach, how would the other Tana respond to that? Uh, maybe uh, maybe the same exact thing would have been assumed about, about Chala, that we would have waited, and that's not true, so come Ashmolan. Now the Gemara gets back to our previous sugya, but we did answer up this stira 
we really didn't answer it as much as we explained both sides as to the machlokas between the two sources of Tana Debe Rabbi Shema. But let's get back to our conversation from earlier. Says the Gemara two thirds of the way down. Once we know that if you have a chova saguf, that there are no boundaries, they apply everywhere, no matter where you are in the world. So then, Moshe the Kasa Rachman Agave Shabbos Lamali. Why did you write Moshe at all by Shabbos? If they apply everywhere, if that's the rule of thumb, that an Isser that uh, that applies everywhere applies everywhere. Why did you say the word Moshe? We know that that's true. We don't need the word Moshe at all because it's a chova saguf. And Chobah Saguf has its Isra applying everywhere. So to this, the Gemara says, it's Rich, we really do need the word Moshe, because Salka Daita Chamina, Ho'ul Uvi Inyana de Moados Ksiva, because the word, it's written among Moados, Shabbos is written among Moados, Tiboi Kiddush Ki Moados, Kamash Molan. I might have thought that Shabbos needed Kiddush HaChodesh, just like Yontem. We know one of the first mitzvahs in the Torah, according to some, the first mitzvah, mitzvah in the Torah for the Jews, is that we get to establish the Moadim by determining when the Kiddush HaChodesh is, when the new moon um, has, uh, sh- has shown in the sky, and therefore we know then how to figure out all the holidays. But because Shabbos is listed among the Moados, maybe, says the Gemara, I would have had a Havamina, that every Sunday we need Bezdin to come outside and establish that today is Sunday. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then we know when Shabbos is. So says the Gemara, because the Torah says, Bechol Moshevo Sechem by Shabbos, we therefore learn that Shabbos is different than Yantif. Whereas Yantif requires Kiddush HaChodesh in order to establish the correct time for Pesach and therefore all of the subsequent holidays. That's not necessary by Shabbos. By Shabbos, we can just rely on a regular count of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the next day will be Shabbos. So says the Gemara, fine, got it. Moshe of the Kasev Rachman Agabe Chalav Adam Lamali. Why do I need to have the word Moshe by Chalav, by Chalav, excuse me, by Chalav and Dam? Says the Gemara, Itzrich, that word I needed too, even though it's Chovas Haguf, and it should have applied Bain Bar, it's Bain Bukhutzar, no matter what. Why add the word Moshe? So to this, the Gemara says as follows Salkadai to Chamina, Hol Uvi Inyana de Korbanos Ksivi, because Chalav and Dam, the Isser is written by Korbanos, Bizman de Ika Korban, when there are in fact Korbanos, Maybe only then, when there are korbanos, would we have an isra of chayla v'dam. But bizman deleka korban, lo. But perhaps it would be the case that when there is no uh, korbanos, maybe there's no isr of chayla v'dam. Kamash malon, the word Moshe vosechem, as it's taught in regards to chayla v'dam, teaches us that the isr of chayla v'dam is not tethered to korbanos, but rather is an isr nohig at all times, even today. Moshe of the Kasa Rachman Agabe Matzo Moror Lamali. Why there do we have the word Moshe that's referenced by Matz and by Maror for a similar concern? It's Trich. Salkadai Tachamina, Ho of the Kasa Al Matzo Sumorim Yochluhu. That's only Bismandi Kapesach. In perhaps the mitzvah do rice of Matzah only applies at a time when there's a Korban Pesach. But Bismandi Leka Pesach Lo. Perhaps I would have said that when there is no when there is no uh, Korban Pesach, perhaps there's no mitzvah do rice of matzvah, ka- matzah, kamash and that's not true either. And one last one, biya de kasa rachman agabe tefillin u petr chamor lamali. If it's a chova saguf to put on tefillin and petr chamor. So then why then does it have the word moshav over there too? Why does it speak in those terms? Says the Gemara, hahu mi boile lichiditanya. That we need for lichiditana debe rabbi shmal for another shita of tana debe rabbi shmal. Asa mitzvah, ase mitzvah zu, Bishvil Shati Kanes Laris. Do the mitzvah of Tfilin and do the mitzvah of Petr Chamor. Because of this, you will then be entered into Eretz Yisrael. We're going to stop right here, four lines from the bottom, on Daf, Lamed Zayin, Amid Wishing you all a beautiful night.